Here are some highlights of this program. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Brainstorm exclusive interview. Our uh, education should be corrected, adapted, and updated. Live better. They can send their children to school because they can interact with their authorities. Things, electricity, computer science, you know, innovation, yeah. And we know that these are uh, brainstorm. Yourself, after watching this interesting program, notice the final statement made by our notable guest, a brand new one. Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are happy just to welcome you to Brainstorm Exclusive. Today's topic is how important is vocational education and training in the Democratic Republic of the Congo? During this program, we're going to watch uh, some reports and interviews around the world that highlight the needs of vocational education and training, not only in other countries, but also in the Democratic Republic of the Congo or DRC. What can young Congolese people learn as a trade is to earn the, their living? And what is the role should parents play to help their children in school guidance? I'm not the only one on these stages to discuss this topic. I'm pleased to welcome a man, a notable who has much experience in vocational education and training. His name is Sam uh, Boo Nji. Sam, how are you doing, sir? Mm, very good. How about you? Yes, I'm pretty well. I'm really very pleased just to welcome you today on um, the Brainstorm show. Uh, the pleasure is mine. Thank you. All right. So let me try just a little bit to present to you and the qualifications of Sam Mbunzi is uh, a graduate in English. So he learned English as a, as a graduate. He's also a consultant at the Japan International Cooperation Agency well, and entrepreneur, teacher of English. You do well in your businesses, I hope. Mm, so, you know, Life is what it is, and uh, a hard worker should do his best to okay. keep the head above water, whatever happens. Everything that right. you embrace, all those things, and you do well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good. Vocational education and training in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So, what is vocational education and training? Please watch this video, and we'll be back. In vocational education, there is no such thing as pass or fail. It's a competency-based training, which means you are either competent or not yet competent. And the word yet implies that you will always have the opportunity to achieve. So no matter how many times you attempt questions or submit assignments, we will support you and ensure that you succeed. We focus on your skills rather than theory. Our goal for when you leave our institute is that you are able to find the best job possible because you can practically apply your skills. That's why employers highly value vocational qualifications on your CV. Also, your skills are portable. So no matter which industry you're in now, with a vocational qualification, you can easily switch over to another industry. Another great opportunity to further your career. We look forward to experiencing this amazing learning journey with you. Vocational education and training, what does it remind of you of? But, um... Uh... My understanding about vocational education that they usually call VE is basically uh, a life or um, need-based education that can convert a unskilled or unexperienced or uh, an illiterate population into a human resource. Why is there a need to talk about this subject today? Nowadays in Democratic Republic of the Congo, is there really a need for us to talk about this subject? So, if you look around the world, uh, the experience of Indonesia, for example, the experience of China, the experience of Japan, the experience of South Korea, and so many countries around the world, so people have been experiencing the the VE, uh, I mean, the vocational education, and it has shown 
it proves that uh, vocational um, uh, education can help the country to stabilize the economy. Yes, we talk about market. that. You refer to other countries where um, vocational school exists and help young people, even folks to learn trade. But in a DRC, is there any school of, uh, that exists that train people in vocational education and training? Yes. But the only one I know is the national, the, what I mean now, the national one. That is uh, what we call in French ENPP. And ENPP uh, is one of the, um, uh, the outstanding uh, VE uh, school here in DRC. And I know there's some guys, even some uh, cameramen and some uh, uh, people who come from their school, they learn that trade here in, in this uh, TV station. There are many of them come from that For school. sure? Yeah, for sure. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. That's nice. Maybe you did not name some other, but there are. There exist many. All the, over I'm just city. afraid to name um, some other places I know here in Kinshasa and Led, uh, unless I'm going to advertise the uh, activities. But I know some of them here, except INPP, that is national one, and uh, I know uh, some of them all around Kinshasa here. Okay, they are supporting. Uh, professional activities and professional learning. Okay. Observations have been made about training. People just learning uh, vocational education. Uh, they want to be trained for a, a manual handicraft work. They don't like it. It seems that they prefer more academic training than a vocational education. Why? Why people choose prefer academic training over a handicraft work? Uh, causes, reasons, or sources for these facts uh, goes back in long in the past. Uh, the roots for it, uh, you know, our fathers, they were, most of them, they were professionals. And um, it, something happened when we we got the independence. Uh, when African countries, we got the independence, many of uh, our parents were not prepared to be uh, administratives. And what did they do? Uh, what I mean, uh, the colonizer, uh, they tried to check upon the workforce they have. I mean, uh, our parents, they try to see those who could be um, very intelligent, the one who knows to write and uh, to speak French, or the one who can uh, make uh, mathematics. They were selected to get the head of uh, companies here in Congo. And now they became boastful. So these are, this is my opinion. So they become boastful and they was priding the fact that they work in the office and it looked like they were laughing at those uh, working as uh, the workforce in the lower degree. Mm -hmm. And everyone and even the youth at that time, they started dreaming. Yes. Me too, I have to study because I need to work in the office. Yes. And if you look around in Kinshasa, I don't know if I still have time to explain, but if you look around in Kinshasa, people are, pride, are, are proud to, to work in the bank. People are proud. Because it's a prestigious career. Prestigious, it's a prestigious careers. Job and they yeah, they want that. to wear a, a jacket. They are dreaming to wear the, the tie. They are dreaming to be in the office, in big office with the good air conditions. So they are trying. They are not looking exactly the need of the country, but they are focusing on the pride. Okay, so you, in which sector is uh, ed vocational education much needed in the DRC? Currently, if I have to focus on that matter, but I think the 
the sector, for example, agriculture, water, forests. How could you believe? We, our country is crossed with so many rivers, but we still lack of water in our faucet. From and when people learn the trade, uh, the, what do, the, that trade will have to deal with water. Mm -hmm. Because you mentioned water, agricultural, maybe you refer to the forest and the, what mm -hmm. does uh, vocational education has to do with water, For agriculture. Example, one can decide to learn to become a plumber. From water, we have electricity. And from water, we can also water many lands and try to farm. From water, we can have, uh, we can farm, uh, what I mean, um, uh, pets and something like that. So I think we should see uh, education of, or agriculture uh, as one of the basically as one of the backbone okay. that can help the country to rise up. Okay, so we, we noticed that from explanations, people have lost the value of uh, any craft to work uh, and prefer academic training because it is prestigious. They think they want to find a suitable job so it's that loss could be also retrieved as well and change people's mind. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to watch vid this video which help people understand the benefits of uh, vocational education and training. Please watch and we'll be back. This is Online College Plan's top 30 highest paying trade school jobs. Reportedly speaking, folks with academic training are more likely to be successful than those with uh, vocational training. Is that true? I don't share this poor viewpoint. I don't share. You know, one has to walk around the world and understand who is who. Because, you know, here in DRC, we are too much afraid of people with higher degree of university. But no matter the question we should ask ourselves, what is or what are outcomes of their degrees, uh, academic degrees in the real life? 
there is a traffic jam all around Kinshasa, and we are fa we are we, we are starving. All the population people are complaining, and uh, our shelter we don't live in, we are not living in good conditions. Schools people are not really uh, going to school in good conditions. But so, who is going to fix it? Who is going to fix it? Absolutely, that's the next question. So the matter is that we should work together, the government and the population. On one hand, the government should, so I mean, uh, should build up kind of policy. So I usually believe that academic uh, studies or university is not for everyone. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. But then you discourage those of even university professors say, okay, you discourage people just to get to the university to study, to take a academic training or academic education. If Are you one, discouraging them? If one understands it like this, he seems to be out of the focus. I say this, I repeat once again. So university is not for everyone. University should be selective. And after getting academic a degree, people go to apply for a job. But now, please tell me, as a one who has got experience in this domain, uh, is there any link between uh, uh, job creation and vocational education? Mm, I think... Like entrepreneurship. Yeah. Is I there understand. any link? I understand. So I think, yes, there's the link. Uh, you know, vocational education is pragmatic. So it means in vocational education, people should learn to implement directly the matter of focus. So this helps the one who is learning as soon as he achieves his degree to work, to practice, to implement. University takes people too much time one has to go at school, at formal school, from kindergarten, three years, primary school, six years, secondary school, six years, and university, five years. Can I make calculations? So, now, let's be pragmatic. You have a professional. As we know that in Kinshasa, and even in Congo, you have professional education, or you have a, a, a training in a, 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 a certain domain. Then someone who is a graduate, in a university, he has so much luck just to get a good job. Then the one who's just to have a handicraft, you think this could help create job on his own, then apply for a job. Let's be realistic. We talk Absol about the term of reward the absolutely, money. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, yesterday I was watching, you know, actually social media is providing with a plethora of information. And yesterday, I was watching on uh, social media. I could see a guy telling the story. It was a story of the young boy in the school and in the in the classroom. There, the, the what I mean, the teacher questioned the class to all the students, and they was asking individually, "What are you willing to become after your studies?" So, to each of students, but they were saying, "I will be a doctor. I will be a lawyer. I will be this and that." And there was the young boy who said, I would be an idiot. Wow. Uh -huh. wow. And the guy, look, the, the, the teacher wanted to know, why did he choose to be an idiot? And after the class, the teacher called the boy, come over here. Why do you want to be an idiot? And the answer? And the, the boy tell the story to the teacher saying, my family is neighboring with another family. And that father, that family, the father of that family doesn't have a, a job. He's a, a, an entrepreneur. He is a, what I mean, he's running his own business. And my dad, my father, has a high degree of a university. And my dad, with all what his conditions in my country, my, my father doesn't have a good job. But that dad, has a good house, well built, and uh, he has got his own car. And every day in the morning, when we are walking to school, this father is driving his children to school. But 
my father. Well, so used to tell to tell me, look at that idiot. Look at that idiot. But in myself, I could compare. The life or the life conditions they have is better than us. And from that time on, I decided that me, I want to be like my neighbor father. Okay, so people need to change their mind when they notice that a lot of Congolese people, especially young people, have that mentality. So they need to change by learning what is the benefits of our vocational education. So we invite you to watch this video again, and we'll be back after. It's a great way for people to earn and learn at the same time, so they're getting a qualification while they're working in an industry that they enjoy. For young people, um, it opens up a lot of different opportunities for them in, you know, so many different industries that they can work in. You know, you've got construction, hospitality, real estate, finance. There's just an endless world of possibilities um, with the vocational education and training. I like working in vocational education um, and training because it gives school leavers and trainees and apprentices additional options on top of university. Not everyone wants to leave school and continue on. For me, it's working with people from all walks of life in all different industry sectors and watching them grow professionally and gain skills training. An apprenticeship and a traineeship is a fantastic way to gain real life experience in your chosen field um, while earning money at the same time. Um, it offers you flexibility and real world experiences in the industry that you've chosen. I started my career in the VIC sector as an apprentice and uh, had my own first hand experience. Um, didn't do so well at school, so VET was very important to me to have an educational solution that wasn't focused around uh, university because that wasn't an option for me. So when I started working in VET, it was a real hands-on experience. Love working with young kids and helping people achieve things. Apprenticeships and traineeships are a great option for job seekers and school leaders um, because uh, they are accessible. Uh, they're affordable for everybody and, um, and they're flexible. I like working in vocational education and training because it's um, a dynamic and ever-changing industry that's always exciting. Okay, now, please, now, since you are parents, you need just to play a, a role in education of your children. So you need to guide them in their school and help them also choose a good uh, option which will allow them to be successful. What kind of role parents have to, to play in to help their children in school guidance. Yet you are the one asking questions. Yeah. I am the one giving answers. Yeah. But uh, we have to understand together that um, uh, in our country uh, the, the, the question to ask should be what is the most important to succeed in life or to have a big diploma? This is the question I don't ask you. I just ask you to all. My parents are supposed to be experienced to help and guide their children to know because they are less experienced so or inexperienced. That's why I'm asking you this question to let you know what can parents, not only you on this stage, but other parents, what can they do just to help their children, to well, help them me, in me, school guidance? The most important, we need to save the time. We need to save the time even helping. This is going to be the future mindset, the future culture people should learn. It means that we don't need to waste our time going to university. One will, one will ask the question, we, we will ask the question, but this guy is speaking like this. Himself, he has a degree at university. I was leading my parent, but now I have understood things otherwise, and I want things to change. So we are the one who we need to, to impact. We need to influence our society and bringing, uh, what I mean, uh, remarkable changes. That is what we should do. I think for me, my children, what they need is to have basic education, the very good basic education. It means that if my, my kid have, can write well, can speak well, can make calculation, that's enough. We that's can enough. find out where we can send him to go and learn the profession and hoping that with our leadership, 
That, that's right. Yeah, Parents that's are exactly. watching you and they can learn from what you've just explained. But uh, on the videos, we're going just to watch some of the parents, even the school teachers, what they do to help the kids just find uh, a vocational education, which will help them be successful or earn their living in life. Please watch this video and we're going to find out what's come after. This is a Boeing 747 engine. Pupils at Curtis Ngondo School of Specialization will learn how to assemble it, how it functions, and how it helps keep a plane in the sky. I'd like to be an astrophysicist. Okay. Yes. Why? Because I was intrigued by the three courses we went through, through the construction of the rocket. The focus here is on engineering, math, science, commerce, sports, and the arts. By the time they live here, they're not going to add to the queue of people that want RTP houses. The DG has recently visited Germany and he was telling me that they're already at 60-40. 60 technical, 40 academic. And that's where the world is going. Where as a country, we're at 80-20. Where it's 80 academic and 20 technical and vocational. And what we are working on through these schools is to turn the pyramid around. Another round of applause, please. It's a change education experts are welcoming. What's exciting about this particular school is that they've tried to sell it in a, um, as a, not as a solution for those who are struggling, um, which is often what happens with vocational education. The school is one of 27 planned for Gauteng. Currently, about 380 pupils are doing grade 8 and 9 here. When they reach grade 10, that's when they will specialize in their chosen fields. Malungi Elupui, Soweto. So we, I'd like you just to tell uh, people, so what is more advantages, academic training or vocational educational training? They both, From your experience. Yes, they both have advantages. I said it earlier that uh, university is not for everyone. I mean this. There are kind part of people, selective ones, those can go at university. And also, on the other hand, there is part of people who should go uh, for vocational training. So, the policy should be what? This is the purpose that I can make for our leaders. The purpose is what? I think the government should build up the policy of uh, selection of applicants for university. It means they should try to select some conditions. If one can fulfill the conditions, he goes to university. Because, you know, we've got many lands. We've got forests. We've got rivers. What are we doing? If you, you walk around in Kinshasa City, you will see young people are deba debating politics. They are debating soccer. They are debating um uh, music, culture, all along the days, they stand up from the morning up to the evening. Do you know why? Why? Because they have not been leaded to what to do. And if you question those people, they will tell you that they have university degrees. And they, yet, sorry, I'm sorry. Yet they have university degrees, but they are still unable to create jobs. Okay, so now I got two questions just before we end. What's your statement to those looking down on the people who undertake vocational school and what glimmer of hope could young Congolese people have for a better future? Then we're going to end. I don't get it better, please. Now, I, I say, what's your statement to those looking down on the people who undertake vocational school? And the last one is, what glimmer of hope could young Congolese people have for a better future? Yes, I think... I have only one statement. All right. We, st we should stop dreaming. Stop dreaming. We should stop dreaming. We need to stand up and work. Please, do you want your tomorrow to be different from your today? Stand up. Try to do something. Do something means what? Try to learn what you think is convenient for you and try to apply it, to implement it in your everyday life, and you will see your tomorrow will be better than your today. Thank you, Sam Buji, for answering this invitation, and you did it well. I'm so very pleased with you to be on this stage. 
Thank you so much. You're welcome. The pleasure is mine. All right. Thanks, dear viewers. You've watched this show. It was very important how important is vocational and uh, vocational education and training uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. You followed closely the explanations provided by our notable guests. So we are very pleased for your attention. And uh, we say thank you so much. See you next time and take care of yourself. Here are some highlights of this program. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Brainstorm exclusive interview. Our uh, education should be corrected, adapted, and updated. Leave better. They can send their children to school because they can interact with their authorities. Next, electricity, computer science, you know, innovation, yeah. And we know that these are uh, brainstorm. Yourself after watching this interesting program, notice the final statement made by our notable guest, a brand new one.